Death, fear, relationships, the children, your health, work. When you want to give up and you need courage to continue, take heart and stay tuned as RJ Jackson writes her signature message of hope on your heart. You don't have to live where you're dying and you don't have to die where you're living. Like every show of Conversations on Courage, you'll be informed, inspired, and encouraged to find the courage you need to succeed at home, work, and in your business. Get your pen and paper. You'll want to take notes. And now, your host, R.J. Jackson, The Courage Giver. Well, well, well. Hello, everybody. And I certainly want to say welcome and welcome back to Conversations on Courage, Stories, and Success Strategies on Confidence and Courage. You know, for the time that we're together, we guarantee you that we are going to saturate your heart and cause you to live your best life ever. And guess what? Not later, but live your best life ever starting right now. We have an amazing opportunity for you to grow and change. And I know sometimes that's scary, But don't worry, we're going to give you a cup of courage to get you on your way. Listen, as I always say, there is greatness inside of you. You're a game changer, and the world awaits your greatness. It's my pleasure to help you find it and live out of it. I'm R.J. Jackson, the Courage Giver, and people always ask me, R.J., huh? Hmm, well, what does that stand for? What does the RJ stand for? And to my surprise, they get disappointed when I say to them, no, it doesn't stand for anything. That's really my name. And they go, "Mm mm-hmm, it must stand for something. And then they start trying to guess. So I try to eliminate their stress, and I say to them, okay, let me tell you, It's really my name. It doesn't stand for anything, but I'll tell you what I stand for. I stand for authenticity, vulnerability, and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I don't care what name you call me, I will always stand for those things. And I've been called a lot of names. Oh, yes, I have. I mean, even my grandchildren call me names. Yes, they do. They call me sweetie. My children, well, they just call me all the time, and usually for money. I got people who call me AJ and JR and CJ. They just call me all kind of things. But here's what I want you to do. I want to invite you to call me friend. How about that? Yes, just call me friend. I would be honored to be your friend and to walk alongside of you. And thinking of walking alongside of you, listen, I promise you, today I have a guest that is going to help you grow, go beyond where you are, and help you get closer to where God wants you to be. And so I want to invite you right now to get your pen, get your paper, get your journal, get your iPhone. I don't care. Just get whatever it takes so that you can write some notes not only on paper or on a a phone, but on your heart because you are going to want to write down and the the details that she is going to give you today. So join me, if you will, in welcoming Pastor Kathy Flowers. Let me tell you a little bit about her. As you've already heard me say, she is a pastor. She is a pastor's wife. She's been married for years, y'all, years. And wait, to the same person? To the same person. And so today we're going to talk to her about persevering through marriage, and we're going to find out what's her secret. How does she do it to the same to the to the same person? Oh wait, 
and they still love each other. They got <laughs> nicknames for each other. And so if you're struggling in your marriage today, if you want information that's going to cause transformation in your situation, you want a journey with us today. So if you're ready to go, let the journey begin. Join me, please, in saying, Pastor Kathy, welcome. Let's have a conversation on courage. Welcome, Pastor Kathy. Well, thank you so much, RJ. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Well, we're excited because you definitely must have a secret when it comes to marriage and persevering and courage. So let's just jump right into the conversation because I'm excited about having this conversation with you because here's what I know. Not too many people can say they've been married over 10, 20 30, wait, 40 years into the same person. So we want to know because that, my friend, takes courage. So tell us, how do you literally use your courage every day to persevere and to stay stay in a marriage that you made a commitment to stay into where most people are bailing out you're pressing in and staying in longer. How do you do it? Okay. Well, RJ, um, that is, it's, it's all God, and it's all about being transparent and honest and learning from mistakes, learning what you did the day before that you can do better, Um, It helps to be married to an incredible person, someone that is just or even more committed than I am to a covenant marriage, to a covenant relationship. And that's what my husband and I have. And I'm enjoying it, and sometimes I just can't imagine that I've lived with this gentleman for these many years, this 46 and a half years, and... um, we're having a great time, we still have fun, we still laugh, and we're still courting one another, if you will. So um, it's, it's, it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but it's more than anything, it's all God. You know, you have said like a totally a mouthful that I cannot let slip by. So I got to go back and seriously ask you some questions on what you said. And first of all, congratulations on 46 and a half years. It sounds like a 19-year-old. I'm 19 and a half, and I'll be 20. And so I know we have people who are listening who have been married like a half a year and already starting to say, "Uh uh-uh, forget this. Look, dude, I'm like so... Um, they need to listen up because you didn't say just a half. You said 46 and a half. And you said, I love this, it helps to be married to an incredible person. And I was wondering, well, who's the incredible one, you or him? Who, who's the one that's like, you know, really getting the benefit here? Who's the incredible I one? I would say you that I'm him. more benefited. Um, he just happens to be an unusually loving, um, giving person, and over the years he's become even more loving and more giving. And um, so I, I'm the one that benefits the most, I believe. Um, so he's the incredible he might, one. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's the incredible one. I am still learning and growing, and he allows me to do that. And so I'm really blessed. I just feel like, how did this happen to me? You know, but um, God, God gave him to me, and I consider him to be a gift outside of Christ. He's the best gift that I have. Wow. So I'm sure that there are days you guys don't agree or, you know, mm-hmm. he doesn't give you your way, and perhaps you got your lip poked out a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying perhaps of course. the woman thing, you know. And so if you sure. feel incredible during those times, I'm just wondering like you know how do you use your courage to get through those times well what I do is I look at the benefit of doing the right thing you know not pouting and I do from time to time Um, females we just have a tendency to you know be the little girl again and if we can't get what we want we try to 
you know, proud or, you know, fold our arms, okay, I'm not talking to you right now, you know, that kind of thing. But then it leaves because I look at this guy and I say, wait, this is my best friend. I can't mistreat my best friend. So um, it just reminds me to live not in the moment but live for the marriage and I want my marriage to be um, a legacy. I want my life with my husband to be uh, one of the legacies that I leave um, with people that have met me or people that know me, um, family members, uh, friends, uh, church members. I want them to see that marriage is doable and it's fun if you do it with God. Mm. It's um, possible if you do it with God. God has to be first. Now, you said some more pretty amazing statements, you said. <laughs> and, and, and we're always talking about live in the moment, learn how to live in the moment. But you just mm-hmm. said, listen, I don't do this for the moment. I do it for the marriage. Like, woo, speak to that for me, if you will. Well, you know, I look at the benefits of marriage. When God um, ordained marriage, he knew what he was doing. And so I can't. I can't hang around and, you know, pout and try to figure out, you know, why can't you understand me, blah, blah, blah. Um, But I try to to see the benefit of having lived with someone as long as I have to see the benefit of making sure that that person – understands where I am, and then I'm understanding where he is. I'm, I'm female. He's male. So we're not always going to see eye to eye. But I try to, in the best way that I can, imagine what it's like to live with me. And that pretty much stops me sometimes, RJ. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, you know, the breaks, you know, in, go, go into year, and I think, wait a minute, what is it like? for him to live with someone that has their lips stuck out or someone that is, you know, pow- pouting or slamming doors or whatever. What is, I mean, how does that feel? And it makes, it makes me come out of that little girl and become the adult that says, wait a minute, you have an incredible gift. Don't misuse or abuse this gift that God has given to you. So when you talk about coming out of that little girl, um, let's talk about, let's go back to you saying he's incredible. Now, I know you don't call him Mr. Incredible, do you? No. <laughs> no, I don't. But sometimes do you, I tell him he is. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a name, like a, a nickname or pet name that you guys, that you each call each other and to express your love even after 46 and a half years? I do. I call him Daddy. And I, I've been calling him daddy even before we got married because he has deposited into my life things that um, I should have learned from my natural father, but I didn't. Um, I learn from him all the time. He is a man of great wisdom. Even before we got married, he was just so it, – it was like he has an old soul, if, if you will, and he has this wisdom that sometimes I know is just not natural. And it, it's, it's a godly wisdom that he has that makes you stop and consider um, life and the gift of life and the, the value that we have that God has given us each other. We are, each and every one of us, are a gift. And sometimes we fail to realize that we are a gift to one another because God is all about relationships. And when we understand that, we want to preserve the relationship. We don't want it to sour. We don't want it to go bad. We want to preserve it and make it the very best that we can possibly make it. So you call him daddy, and that means you're a daddy's <laughs> girl more than once. Yeah, if you will. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, how awesome is that? So earlier you also talked about how important it is to be transparent and that you're in a covenant marriage. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that a little more in terms of a covenant marriage? What does that look like? A covenant marriage means that I am reserved for you and you alone. 
um, it's not it's not um, something that I want just for myself, but it glorifies God. And whenever we're in a relationship with our husbands or with our wives, or even um, in a relationship with anyone.